Hey, this is your favorite German composer, Sebastian Schütt. Images come to life when we play around with the third dimension. By choosing an interesting perspective, we are adding depth to a shot. If we want to integrate additional 2D or 3D elements into a plate, it comes in handy if we know where the vanishing point is. I'll show you a quick way of setting up a visual guide so it helps us to place and distort elements in the correct perspective. If we want to keep it simple, quick to process and procedural, we need to find a mathematical function to do this for us. So I decided to use the expression node. Perspective lines slice through the image and culminate in a single point in the far, far distance. We need a repetitive pattern for which we can define a frequency. Let's have a look at the sine function. This is a rotating vector. The green dot moving up and down is the projection of the tip of that red line onto the y-axis. If we plot a curve for this projection, we can see that it resembles a sine wave. At every angle of the circle, we get a corresponding point on that curve. If we want to define our 2D image in angles, or as what we will use later on, radians, we need to recreate this red line. That way we can calculate the angle of a specific point in relation to the x-axis. We will use the arch tangent function for this calculation. If you want to know more about how you can use trigonometry for some cool workarounds in Nuke, I recommend watching my transform episodes of Unleash the Node. We will have to do this calculation for all the pixels of our image, so I'm using the arch tangent function for every x and y coordinate. This gives us a nice radial ramp representing each angle. If I convert this to degrees, it might be more obvious. Here you can see our values representing the 90 degrees of this visible angle. If I now use the sine function on this, we don't see much of a curvy pattern. Here we can see why. Those 90 degrees don't even give us a full sine wave. So we want to pretend that the angle is way bigger. Let's multiply the values by 30. We finally start to see some slices created by the sine wave. Since I want to place our vanishing point interactively, I will set up a position knob and use it in our expression to offset the center. I add another point to help me place one of the perspective lines right where I want to. If I use the ArchTangent2 function on those two points, I will end up with a radian value representing the angle between them. If I add this to our expression, the angle of my control line gets offset accordingly to where I place the points. I'll add another knob that makes it easier for us to change the resolution of the slices. If I increase the contrast on the slice edges, so I end up with only values of 0 and 1, I can use an edge detect and it will spit out only the edges of our slices. Now I can place my line wherever I want to determine the vanishing point. For a better use I place all of this in a group node and add the controls, so the knobs are always exposed once I open up the properties. This gives us a nice visual guide to place objects with the correct perspective. I am Sebastian Schütt and I'll see you soon.